<laughs> I never went through selection and all that. But... Well, it's good then, because now that I know um, that I can reach out to you um, whenever, Bro. Which, Bro. which, like I said, on LinkedIn, like I, like I know I can reach out to you whenever, but it's just... Before before all this stuff, good, we're still good. brothers, man. You can reach out to me. I, Fine. I got you. Um it's, it's not even it's not even that serious, man. If you need something, run it through me, man. I got you. I got you. All right. So let me I'm just have my uh, cigar over here. Oh, oh Start yeah. Today. Uh you all good. Let me make sure this thing is it is alive. So what do you do, man? How long you had this channel set up, man? All right. Can you hear me? I, yeah, I, I got you. All right. Um, let me put it. Let me. All right. There. All right. You still got me? Yeah. All right. So I've had this for, for about, shit, I'm going on 10 months now, man. And the intent behind this channel initially was to, again, help folks get into SF. You know, I'm a big motivational dude, so I try to help them with mindset, physical fitness. I just started doing finance stuff on the channel. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just trying to just share, you know, knowledge, experience, you know, trying to get folks to yeah. the point where I am now. Right. Because I like yeah. to call myself successful. Um, so I just want to help folks yeah. get to this point. And People don't so know about far, the journey, you know. Yeah. So far, it's. It's it's been pretty good, man. Um, so what are you the, recording on? Just a regular phone, or you got a whole? What do you got? Yeah, so so I started with just um, just my iPhone. I just because it, man, it it took me a while to figure all this social media stuff out. So I started with my iPhone. Um, then I got a younger brother who's into. Um, like videography and all of that. So I brought him on and he has a big camera. So he'll record yeah. some of my stuff. Yeah. But for the most part, like everything that I've done up to this point, it's just been with, with the iPhone, you know what I mean? And I've learned how to edit and do all that stuff. It's been a process, you know, but. At so this right, this, this right here is on your phone or are you going from your computer? No, so I'm going from my computer now with this one. So I had uh, to purchase a webcam for this one. Okay. Um, but just getting the YouTube set up, the Instagram, it's actually been mainly like just the followers of the channel. Like guys are giving me like tidbits here and there, like how to come up with a banner, how to do a bunch of different stuff. Like guys are actually helping me out as I Yeah, go. man. Those those so, young guys are tapped into the digital <laughs> realm, man. They're yeah. on it, dude. Yeah, they'll yeah. they'll they just set up a whole web page, uh, commercial yeah. for you, thirty minutes, yeah. man. That's crazy. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. So are you? So we're live now, uh, Keith. Are you able to see the? So are you able to see the the live and everything on uh, the screen as far as the YouTube yeah. questions yeah. and all of that stuff? No, I just see it says live. Uh, okay. About all, that's why all that, that I have. I got you. I got you. All right. So um, since we're live, man, we'll uh, get it kicked off. So um, guys, uh, welcome to a, another live stream. This one was unplanned. However, um, based on the video that I put out a couple of days ago, uh, a buddy of mine, Keith, I think what we met back in what, 2019, Keith and Jordan? Yeah, 2018, 2019, something like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I met Keith in, I think it's 2019, because I was on a deployment to Jordan. Uh, he was at the gym. We got the talking, and I've been uh, 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 friends with him since. So uh, Keith saw the video, the video that I put out um, talking about Navy SEALs. And of course, Keith is a SEAL. <laughs> uh, and I did put an invite out there for anybody that was willing to sit out and talk with me to go over some of the points that I spoke about in the video. And Keith took me up on that offer. So Keith, I appreciate you doing this. I always preach on my channel that I'm all about having the hard conversation because I truly believe that as uh, as men, like we should be able to sit down and have a civilized, hard conversation and discuss certain things, right? Because we're always going to have different opinions. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we should be able to talk about them 
and exchange thoughts uh, and still be okay at the end of whatever conversation that, that we have. All right. So with that Absolutely. said, Keith, I'll, I'll, I'll kick it over to you. If you can just let the audience know a little bit about yourself and also your service in the Navy. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, my name is Keith. Uh, did about 12 years in the Navy, uh, about 10 years as a SEAL. Left there, went uh, OGA for about seven years. And I've been in the private sector ever since, doing some uh, private consulting and advising, what have you. Originally from South Carolina, country boy. So that's, that's, that's about it, you know. Awesome, awesome. Well, again, Keith, I appreciate you coming out, man. And uh, uh, with that said, guys, so let's get into it. So audience, if you're not tracking, so I think it was Sunday, I put a video out and the title of the video was uh, why I don't like the Navy SEALs, all right? And then I went into that video and I talked about um, the image that, be, that is being portrayed to us as um, civilians, to all, also to other service members, right? It's, it's, not a, um, it's not a secret that, you know, SEALs like to write books and make movies. That's, that's just something that we see from uh, the outside looking in. And in, in that video, I spoke about um, Lone Survivor, how that's portraying uh, self-preservation, right? And then I also spoke about uh, the event that took place with uh, John Chapman when he was, uh, I guess, left behind was the words that I use, right? Um, on the hilltop as the rest of the guys e and e out of there, right? I spoke about that and then um, I also spoke about how no one in social media, as far as on the SEAL side, is saying anything, is um, adding context to what was taking place, All right? So I did that video, and then, of course, Keith, you reached out, which I appreciate, right? You were like, hey, man, there's certain things that uh, you're missing to see here, and then we, we had an email conversation about it, and then I also had a master chief reached out. Initially, it was, hey... Uh, talk about Tongo Tongo, right? Uh, so I spoke about Tongo Tongo uh, in another video that I posted, right? Um, before we get to you, Keith, so I took the videos down, and this is why I took the videos down, right? I initially had an intent of posting those videos so we can you know, like have the conversation of what these young men are seeing, because when those young men reach out to me, those are the questions that they're asking. Right. And I'm giving them my answers based on my perspective on what I see. And then so I had those videos on there and I don't really get to involve in the comments. Right. I normally just let dudes work it out. And then but I started reading the comments on those videos and I started to realize, like, man, like this was not the intent. Like guys are down there bickering at each other. Uh, guys are, you know, just sharing their experience and it wasn't positive, right? And then, but I left that be, but what got me was I noticed that a, uh, there was a comment on there from a civilian and the, the comment said, man, like as a civilian looking in, Americans, uh, uh, America's heroes shouldn't be fighting each other. And that's what got me and that's what pushed me to take the videos down because I was like, man, like my, the intent here was not to, to, I'm not trying to fight anybody. I'm trying to shed light on what I'm seeing. So with, with that in mind and also with some conversation that I had with Master Chief, I took the videos down, right? Um, with that said, Keith, I'll shoot it over to you. We can talk about how you saw the video, how you received it, and also some of the issues that you've had with it. Yeah, sure. So... Uh, when I saw the video, because I know you, my first, you know, uh, instinct was, brother, you can come to me. We can have a discussion privately, you know, before, before we go public, if I'm a, you know, I have a critique about SF, I'm gonna call on my SF brothers and make sure I, what I have is correct. That's just, you know, how I move. And, uh, so my issue was it, it, the video seemed to portray seals as, you know, uh, undisciplined, uh, selfish cowboys, like we were leaving our brothers on the on the on the battlefield. We're taking off, which uh, nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, in war, as you know, bad things happen. We all know that. Unfortunate things happen. Uh, to me, 
leaving someone on the battlefield is uh, a deliberate action. But if it occurs through the fog of war, is that the same thing? No, because, but it is what it is. We can Monday morning quarterback it, but in each uh, branch of, of SOC, well, this MARSOC, SF, SEAL, we all have our black eyes. We all have our ARs. We look back on the mission, we're like, hmm, we could have done this better. We could have done, done that better. Even in SF, there are instances where guys have been left on the battlefield, whether it's an MIA, POW, this, that, and the third. But uh, the main point is what's being portrayed is not accurate, especially because SF and SEAL, we kind of go head and head because we're always competing, as you know, in the AOR for, for work. And people behind the scenes really know how this works, but uh, that's how it works. If you want to get a mission, it's a competition. But uh, I keep hearing the same, the same uh, critiques. You know, SEALs write books. They're always in the news and movies and this, that, and the third. And it's, it's, it's funny because, you know, uh, I'm young enough to remember all the movies from the 80s, which was SF heavy. And, and no one had a problem with that. You know, no one had a problem with Rambo, which is SF. No one had a problem with all these movies. Hey, making money. Uh, SF was real popular then because the missions you guys are doing, no one's going to do a movie about you if you suck. Let's just, let's just call it what it is. But now with the social media and SEALs, we're, what, what we're doing, people seem to think that that's all we do. And, and that's not really accurate. Uh, yeah, some of us go in that field and I have no problem with that as long as you're not divulging uh, uh, SOPs and TDPs that can get uh, other brothers killed uh, on, on the battlefield. So that was, that was my first gripe. And, and the second gripe was, you know, let's, let's be accurate. Let's look at the, the SEAL community in its totality. And they say, hey, are these guys guys that I can depend on? And the answer is unequivocally yes. I mean, our track record has shown that. And I will say the same thing about my SF brothers. So we want to dispel these rumors that we're, all we're doing is writing books. That, that's not really true. Before we even got into this field of uh, media, whether it be books or TV shows or movies, you know, that stuff was doing it way before we started. That's who wrote the blueprint, you know? Uh, but uh, let's be accurate about that. And, you know, like I said, I have no problem with guys doing that as long as what they're divulging is not putting other guys in danger who are currently active or down range or what have you. I got you. I got you. And again, Keith, like I, I own that one, right? Because I have SEAL friends. You and I'm also uh, linked up with with the uh, um, uh, Remy, right? Shout so out I to Remy. Easily, yeah, yeah. So I could have easily reached out and at least prep you guys for what I was about to do. So I do own that, and I apologize for that. No worries. You know no I mean? worries. No um, worries. Now, as far as what's being portrayed. Um, and we, as it relates to SEALs, you mentioned that that's not accurate at all. Now, how would you go about changing that? Because one of the things that I said was, hey, if if I'm seeing it, then more than likely other folks are seeing it. And if other folks are seeing it, then the civilian folks are probably seeing it to a to to an extent. Right. As as far as because to, to be honest with you, until I spoke with um uh, Master Chief, right? Because I also had a Master Chief reached out, and he actually shed some light on the uh, um, uh, John Chapman app, um, app that, hey, you know, the, uh, I think you guys just call him a slab, like the Medal of Honor winner, like he actually did a lot of traveling in which he spoke about the event of that mission, and then he owned every single uh, mishap that took place to include um, what happened to John. So he broke that down for me in a way that I understood and could relate to. Because when anybody goes to YouTube and they're looking at this um, footage of hand maneuvering and running and gunning, like they don't have any context. Like, and I guess that was one of my gripes was because it's out there. Like as soon as it's well, on social media, it's left for interpretation, but nobody well, put any context to it. Well, that's the thing. So to answer your first question, what would I change about, I guess you were referring to SEALs 
uh, being in the uh, media, being in the uh, social spotlight, uh, and that's our first question, uh, I wouldn't change a thing. And, and here's why. Before you and I became what we became, how, do we, how did we find out about the soft community? For me, I found out about it through movies, through books, through, you know, the Road Warrior, uh, you know, uh, books like in, in movies like that. So that is what got me interested in going that route and challenging myself without those that media, without that avenue. I didn't know anything about SEALs. It's not like SEALs were coming to my high school and saying, hey, come join us. It's a clandestine operation. Same thing with, with SAW. Uh, again, so I wouldn't change that because now, especially more so today, that's how the youth gets their information, right? Right, wrong, or indifferent. They're getting it from the internet. They're getting it from mass media, whether it's tra traditional media or uh, in a cyber context. So I wouldn't change that at all. All I would say is if you're putting out something, whether you're from the soft community, SEAL community, ensure you run it through the proper channels so you're not putting out classified information, TTPs and SOPs is they're going to put somebody else in danger. But yeah, spread the word uh, because it doesn't matter if 100 guys apply, 200 guys apply, the standard is a standard. It's not like it's going to be a flood of just Johnny off the street, still got to make the standard. So I, I wouldn't change that, but I definitely will... Uh, uh, customize it a bit uh, as far as, you know, what's being revealed. So that's, that's being said. So as far as the operations, uh, for one, at the Lone Survivor operation, I was in the teams when that occurred. And I actually was on, I think I was, was I, I was on an army base. I'm not sure if it was, I think it was Brack. No, it was Fort Benning, I believe. And uh, the Rangers are the one who took me and my brothers in. We were there for a course. I think it was a javelin course. <laughs> and uh they took us in and they gave us the AAR while we were there to see we could see what what really went down and we were able to re, you know get some more insight joe public doesn't have that aspect they don't have that access they can't they can't get that and nor should they <laughs> as you can see right now with you know this individual leaking documents even guys with clearances don't know how to practice opsec you think joe Shimo on the street knows how to do that so, of course, they're not going to get that information and they're going to fill in the gaps with their imaginations. Doesn't mean it's correct. Doesn't mean it's wrong. That's just what it is. Our job is to do our job. All right. You know, it's not our job is not to shape the, 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 the message in the social media landscape. We do that through our actions. We do that through how we carry ourselves when we're walking down the street like you and I in regular T-shirts going about our business. Uh, that's how that that is shaped. But, you know, what we can't do is start eating our own, start throwing shots at each other in public, whether it's a soft, I mean, the SF community coming at the SEAL community or vice versa. That's what we can't do, because then that's when, you know, we're divided and others come in and take our lunch. All right. So, but, you know, behind the scenes, SF, SEAL, MARSOC, we, we, we critique each other. We hold each other accountable. We always have these conversations behind the scenes offline. So that should remain. And I like that because it keeps you honest. You know, you, 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 you see how your peers are viewing you. And this is beyond the, the normal teasing we do with each other, right? We, we still say, hey, man, that was a good op. But hey, what happened over there? And then we divulge. You know, I've been down range with SF guys. It's, yeah, we tease, but then when we get down to it, we've always worked well together. Of course, we have a different way of doing business because we have different expertise and, and mission sets, all right? So Joe Publix doesn't have that information. Again, they're getting it from the media. You have to take that as it is. It's like anything on the internet, not everything is fact, but not everything is false either. You have to understand how to discern fact from fiction. Yeah, yeah, uh, that I agree with. I guess my only rebuttal for that one would be, so like in my case, right? So this is, you know, like my platform, and I'm the one that's putting the information out there. Now, if I notice something that's not correct or that's incorrect, you know, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube, then I feel like I'm obligated and I have a responsibility to step in and say, hey, that's not accurate. Um, and I guess 
because there's a lot of information circulating about the, you know, the loan survivor app. There's information circulating about the John Chapman app. Um, I, but I, and I've scoured the internet and I don't see anywhere where anybody, you know, put some context to it. Like, hey, that's not accurate. Whether it was um, the guys that were actually there or somebody that knows of it, they kind of just, you know, let folks run with it. You know what I mean? Even to be honest with you, in the service, I've heard certain rumors from, you know, SF buddies or from Rangers. And it, it's kind of hard for anybody to, to know what's truth if there's no, um, if no one's out there fact uh, checking. Which and there's leads, a reason. Yeah. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is because, because SEALs are such a small, tight knit community, we like to, uh, square ourselves away internally because we're so small and unlike most of the branches uh whether you're talking about you know east coast teams where you're talking about you know uh damn neck still you got to go through butts so we all know each other from one or two degrees of separation so when something happens that is unfortunate that's bad that's embarrassing whatever it may be we like to critique each other in-house all right and what we try to refrain from doing is going all over the internet uh you know debating each and every troll or or misinformation that's not what what what, what we do people keep speaking about the gallagher situation and uh i'm gonna tell you right now you know if you think that that wasn't spoken about internally you're way off you're way off before that even got to uh the level it got to trust me and believe me that was hotly debated everything in the seal community is democratic it's voted it's not just you walk in and well i outrank you this is what's going on no it's, you put it to a vote you put it to a vote and uh before that got there trust me that probably was a hotly debated topic we do that internally and we hold each other accountable doesn't matter if you agree with it or not your peers if you know when i was in and you got boarded or you did something wrong the board is set by seals it's not like some you know regular navy guy walks in he's like yeah i'm, I'm sitting down here you had to have been gone through the crucible which is buds where the trident to sit on there to they even have a space to speak so that's what's going on we're handling it internally we have these conversations internally and we don't we don't go out to the media and correct everyone. You might see a guy show up here and there, but largely you don't see, you know, Seals showing up on CNN as a contributor, given his insight normally. Yeah. That's just not uh, what we do. Now, the uh, individuals that are on social media, do you think those guys have any, I guess, responsibility, right? Because like, for example, me as a Green Beret, right? I'm retired. Um, and one of the things that I try to do on this channel, like I said, is to help prepare the next generation in however way that I can. So if there's a topic, for example, within the Green Berets, for example, toxic leadership has just been one of one of my big pet peeves, mainly because I've experienced it. I know how it can destroy a team. I know what it can do to morale. So with my platform, I feel like I'm, I am my brother's keepers, right? Like if I can, you know, shed some light on toxic leadership within the Green Berets, then I feel like if I don't do that, I'm, I guess, selling them short, right? Because I know what they're about to get themselves into. So if I can shed some light on it and say, hey, when you get here and you deal with toxic leadership, handle it in this manner. It does exist, blah, blah, blah. That's my way of, I guess, prepping them for X, Y, and Z. Right. Because I'm mm -hmm. invested. It's my regiment. I want to make it better. And this is my way of doing it. Now, as far as SEALs in the media, do you think they have, I guess, that responsibility or should they be doing it? Or do you prefer that they just keep it separate? SEAL team stays where it's at in social media. SEALs stay where they're at. You know, there is a program within the uh seal community where they 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 go around and you know i'm maybe getting this incorrect where they go around and they um 
have a situation where they go to different colleges or high schools and uh, I can't remember the name, but they put forth the image and, you know, kind of it's like a, a, a recruiting uh, deal where they, you know, engage with high schoolers or, or, or college students and, you know, put them to like a pseudo fitness screen or whatever, where they can have a Q&A as well, kind of show what the SEAL does, does. But yeah, that is done on that level, grassroots level. As far as the media, that's not really done because that's not what we really do. Now, of course, you got these younger SEALs coming through, these young hard chargers who are very, you know, social media savvy. That may change in the next couple of years, right? But guys like such as myself and, and, and others, that's not really our lane. Uh, we don't really go through it. You and I just spoke about our little brothers being social media savvy. Just just those the year gap is a whole different generation of how they engage. So that may change. Right now, we don't we don't do that. We don't feel the need to correct every person uh, when they're talking about seals and oh, you should do this and do that. I was in the Navy trying to screen for seals, and uh, I couldn't get the correct information. And, and I was in the Navy. Hello, can you hear me? You you you're muted. I can't hear you. No, you're good. You're good. All right. Yeah. I was in the Navy trying to get the correct information to even go to buds and I couldn't get it. So I'm sure your, uh, your average Joe Schmo is not getting the correct information. Like I said, out in the media, but again, to get the correct information about an op, first of all, you're talking about classifications. You're talking about what can you say, what can't you say? And trying to give that information to someone who doesn't have a clearance while not violating the classification of that material, you end up sounding disconjoined because you can only say certain parts and you're skipping certain parts and you, you sound disingenuous at best. So then you come off as untrustworthy. <laughs> so it's very it's hard to do because what we do, you and I, it's a major classify, classification nature to it. It's hard yeah. to tell what really happened because you, you're, you're omitting names, you're, you're redacting things. Well, you know, I was over here. Well, where's here? Well, there. Middle East. It's a big place. Where in the Middle East? Oh, I can't really say. And you look like you look like you're hiding information, right? You would come up as untrustworthy. That's just human nature. You're not trying to be that way, but you're not trying to violate the classification of that op. Does Joe Schmo gotcha. un understand that? No. He's going to go back and say, oh, man, Jay was trying to BS me, man. He was skipping over stuff, wouldn't tell me names. He's never had a clearance. He's never been read in on anything. He's going to fire up his social media page and say, oh, Jay's a liar. Jay told me what to BS about that. And yeah. you, you look at it, you're like, whoa, whoa. I, I couldn't tell you this. It's classified. I couldn't tell you who was with me. That's why. I showed you a picture. Everybody's redacted but me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that looks, that looks suspicious, you know? So yeah, you're talking about an individual who doesn't come from, who hasn't been read in and what, or what we had. So. You got to take that for what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming out, and we'll wrap it up here, and we'll see if we can get some questions out of the audience for yeah, you. Sure. Um, so, again, if you could, I guess, share one last message as it relates to, uh, you know, the the John Chapman app, Marcus Luttrell, and Lone Survivor, uh, like you mentioned, it's not necessarily accurate what the media is putting out there and that um certain information as far as AR comments all closed kept secret so um anything else to add on that before we move on because again like i said i'm not privy to that information right i just know what i've heard uh and i'm sure everybody else that's listening it's the same i guess uh, uh concept or they're in the same place yes i mean this is the first really you know i'm hearing about you know anyone having these type of uh, uh, sentiments about those operations. But let me be clear: uh, we seals, we don't, we don't, we don't deliberately, we don't leave our brothers on the battlefield. Uh, you know, like I said, we're not perfect, nor is any other soft group. This includes the SF community. This includes Mar Marsoc. But we do our best and our damnest, and we're we're pretty good at it, at being the best at what we're doing. Uh, so. As far as a lone survivor uh, deal, 
that was that 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 op was was a bad op, right? Not bad in the sense of execution, but it, it went left quick. That happens. That's what we that's what we we that's what we train for, you know. And my brothers that were on that op, they did what they could to survive it. Uh, you can go back and Monday morning quarterback and say, well, you should have done this, you shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Sure, it's easy. In hindsight, it's always 2020. But uh, you know, those guys, in my opinion, did a fucking great job of, of, of executing to the best of their ability with the information they had on hand and where they were and how many people they had with them. You know, people don't understand that. Again, I, I don't expect them to. All right. Then they're, they're not they're not war fighters, you know, for the most yeah. part. We're talking about the vast public. And and that's fine. You know, yeah. I, I chose that path because I believe in freedom and, you know, I, and I love this country. So that's that's fine. You know, but I'm open to a q and I'm open to people saying, well, hey, you know, what about this? Well, hey, even something as benign as how can I get started with SEAL? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I had the yeah. same questions coming through. And of course, the answers weren't very clear. A lot of that stuff is kept is kept close to the chest. I had to do my own research. I was calling around, and you know, you get a you get a bunch of crazy information. I remember I was told by somebody who would haven't even been to Buds. Oh yeah, man, you should take cold baths every night. <laughs> At the time, I'm 20 years old. I believed it. One day, I ended up getting the ass chief of Buds on the phone, and he was like, "That's nonsense. Don't do that." <laughs> but if I had took that and ran with it. You know, I'm doing myself a, a pretty big disservice. Now, you take that, multiply it with the internet. Now, how much misinformation is out there about SF community seal selection, whatever? It's trash. Yeah. I've personally been online and had conversations with people who, you know, failed buds, giving out nonsense. And I'm on there and like, nah, man, that, that's wrong. And he's telling me, no, you're wrong. <laughs> like, well, what? What's your class number again? Oh, zero. So what are you talking about? You know, yeah. but of course, again, it's the internet. Every everybody's tough on the internet. Everybody yeah. has, yeah. you know, everybody, everybody. I, I know what I'm talking about. Come on, yeah. do you, and you always say, do you due diligence? If you happen to run into, or have access to a page such as yours, young guys tap into it. Don't be afraid yeah. to ask the questions. Don't don't think, well, I don't ask this. Is me seem silly? Ask it. Hey, yeah. what kind of boots should, should I wear? How should I hydrate? What should I? What my, what should my diet be? Training to go to. SF or seal selection. Trust me, all that all that matters. All yeah. that matters. I told a guy one time. I said, "Hey, buds, the main thing is taking care of your feet." I know it sounds unsexy, and well, I, I want some cool. Trust me, if your feet go and it's tore up, nothing is going down. You're yeah. not running Those anywhere. Yeah, you're not running anywhere. You're not swimming anywhere. You're, you're done. So yeah. as soon as you get off of training, take care of them, air them out, get, let them get dry. So. That small bit of information can make the difference, as you know. One injury could yeah. turn into you getting med dropped. You're out of here. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and you know, and you know what that means. Once you get back to the yeah. regular military, getting back to that position, the hoops you got to jump through, the asses you got to kiss, mm-hmm. the, po- the politics you got to play. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You have ridiculous. a small window. You got a small yeah. window. You got to maximize it. Once you get in there, you get the position. You get orders. You go in. Uh, stop i mean yeah. I, st- I stopped dating i stopped man i was just but hey, focus look, yeah man don't, don't come over here with that you're talking crazy click if you ain't running and swimming you ain't talking about no no that's hard to do that takes dedication yeah. right you know dumping your girlfriend and going because what you don't want is you just got your ass kicked for a week and then friday come and your girlfriend's in your ass <laughs> you yeah. know you, you you want to be clear mentally and physically but yeah that's not going to be in any book. That's not going to be any any military website. No, 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 no. That's not anywhere. <laughs> That's not anywhere. Um, and again, like I can relate to the armchair quarterback uh, aspect of it myself, because after Tungo Tungo happened, even though I wasn't there, like I found myself wargaming it, saying, man, if I was there, I would have done it like this. If I was there, I would have done it like that. And I, I found my brain, you know, running trying to figure out what was going on, even though I, you know, know some of the dudes and I know exactly what took place. So I absolutely can relate to that. Um, and, and even I, yeah. and on the outside looking in, even the general who came out, he his first uh, comments, if I'm not mistaken, were putting the team down, saying mm-hmm. that they were going they were going rogue and this, that and the third. And you and I know 
Yeah, no, that doesn't no, happen. No, absolutely not. No mission no. goal. You can't go outside of war just on your own. Hey, guys, you yeah. know, at the child, let's go out here. And... Negative. You can't even. Yeah. We can't. Even, you can't even prep the vehicle. Yeah. You're like, what, what are you doing, Jay? We got no mission today. Well, I'm just going to go out. No, you're not. <laughs> stand, stand down. Right off the bat. You grab a no beer. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go grab a beer and roll around. Nah, we don't, we don't do patrol for con. We don't, we don't do that. We don't do yeah. that. <laughs> so when I was hearing that, I was like, and people ate it up. They believed yeah. this general. Like, oh, yeah. man, because he's, he's a general. Again, authority doesn't mean you are the, you know, the, the, the bringer of truth. People should take truth as authority instead of authority as truth. Just because he's a general doesn't mean he's not capable of lying. We're all fallible. But people ate that up, right? So just like with the Chapman situation and, and the Lone Survivor situation, if you're not in that community, you wouldn't know. I mean, I heard it, but I've been downrange. I knew what he's saying was bogus. You, you're not going to go, there's no such, bro, get out of here. Yeah. The things you have to do to get outside the wire, you're not just going to walk out. Your own team is going to shut you down. Your own team is going to be like, hey, whoa, whoa, what's going on? You doing what? Why, why are you locking the loader? Nah. Because you know when we, when we do missions, you know what you got going on. They, they oh, yeah. fire. Oh, yeah. You know what the, op, what the op board says, who's doing what, when and where. So once that got going and some of the truth started to sprinkle out, then he, he didn't want to answer any more questions. Again, if you're, your, you're the layman's guy on the street, you had to look at that through a different lens and say, hmm, this guy's flip-flopping over here. Is he trustworthy with his previous statement? Is, it, what, was that accurate? Now do your own due diligence, right? Mm -hmm. People don't really do that. They take the first grain and say, oh, that's truth. No matter how crazy it sounds, and they run with it. Yeah, yeah. And so, just me just, personally, like I'm not, especially when I see like the internet, like warriors going on and all the bickering back and forth. Like I know that it's, it happens. I'm just not a fan of it on my page. So like when I saw, you know, dudes going at it and all the bashing, then I was like, you know what, like, this isn't like, I'm not one to sit back and, and get off on that. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it makes me sick. Cause I don't support that, which is why I was like, you know what, like these videos got to go because the intent that I initially had is not being met. Uh, but I think you coming on um, and actually speaking with me, does two things right it shows the audience right the the young men and women that are following me um what right looks like as far as how to handle uh business as as men right like yes you can have two different perspectives and still sit down and talk like like men and figure it out as opposed to hiding hiding behind the keyboard and just you know all caps firing off and then not getting anywhere uh, right. And it also puts um, things in perspective as, hey, you guys weren't there, even though, you know, stuff is left for uh, stuff is leave is left to the imagination. The folks that were there knows what takes place and they're not going to validate anybody's uh, opinion just because they asked. for it. Yes. But, you know, the, the issue we have today is, you know, there's little room for open discourse, right? Either people want you to agree with them wholeheartedly, right, wrong, yeah. or indifferent. And that's the problem. You need to be open to critique. Yeah. Doesn't matter what critique, what, what, what community you come from, and that's the issue. If you feel that way in the comments and you're that passionate about it, your, your position, cool. Drop a link, come up, put your face on it, put your skin in the game, and say, hey, yeah. this, is, this is what my gripe is, and this is why, cool. You know, yeah. all I ask is be respectful. Give both both sides the opportunity to speak their piece. Doesn't mean you guys are going to come to a common accord. You might agree to disagree, but at least each side is being heard in their totality yeah. instead of you just shouting people down and insulting each other. Well, nothing yeah. is learned through that sort of dialogue. Yeah. You know, yeah. a five-year-old knows better than that. I mean, that's not yeah. what we're doing. You have yeah. to be willing to say, you know what, concede to the point where I could be wrong. If you yeah. can't go into thinking, hey, I may be wrong, Jay may have some insight that I do not possess, let me hear what he has to say, then you're not coming in here in good faith. Exactly. You have to be willing exactly. to have your mind changed. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that today. They want to be surrounded by people who agree with them because that's their yeah. safe space. That's what makes them feel comfortable, uh, psychologically speaking. And, and that's a hard thing to break now because that's kind of, you know, 
where 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 the modern era is. But uh, yeah. spaces like this need to exist where you can just come in here and speak openly, and honestly. Just be respectful. You know, yeah. keep the profanity to a minimum. It's a family show, and uh, <laughs> sp speak your piece, man. You know, say yeah. where you're coming from, and uh, you you'd be surprised how much you can learn from people who come from different places that you come from. Yeah, different yeah. different trains of thoughts. You know, different perspectives, and that's fine. Don't don't get sensitive and you want to shout the guy down because he's this or that. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. We yeah. don't learn anything that way. What what you right. end up doing in is retreating to your tribe. Mm -hmm. And then you start to create your own narrative about the other tribe. Yeah. You guys are not talking. So you say, well, those guys yeah. over there, that's how bad things happen, right? Yeah. You know, talk to them. You'd be surprised. They they put their pants on the same way you do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I you tell know. you what, man, between me and you, we're we're gonna make men great again, right? We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm, a, I'm yeah. All right. Um, so I'm gonna jump to the uh, chat real quick, Keith, yeah, um, and then no we'll problem. wrap it up. I'm yeah. gonna grab some uh, um, some questions for you that might apply to both of us. Some might just apply to you, right? Um, all right. So, all right. So with that said, man, we'll jump right into it. Uh, the first question is, what's today's topic, right? Today's topic, guys, like I mentioned, was in regards to the two videos that I posted, one on Sunday and one on Monday, speaking about the perception that SEALs are putting out there as it relates to uh, Lone Survivor and also the uh, uh, John Chapman uh, operations, right? So that was the topic that was being discussed, all right? Um, and then somebody wanted to know, hey, uh, what's the gentleman's full name? His full name is Keith, all right? Quit trying to troll him on social media. <laughs> Right. He doesn't need all that. <laughs> opposite right, violation um, right there, man. It's opposite violation. <laughs> um, and then this one, Keith, uh, what SEAL team did you serve in? I don't know if you're able to disclose that. I was in the East Coast. So Okay. So explain to me the, the East Coast, West Coast deal, because like, that's always been confusing to me. Right? So all I know right, you have right, East Coast, right. West Coast, but what does all that really mean? <clears throat> so... The East Coast, West Coast thing is, is, is a thing in the SEAL community, right? Okay. Uh, West Coast, of course, you guys know, they're in Cali. East Coast, we're in Virginia, sunny Virginia. So the, the, the cultures are a little bit, bit different, but then again, it's the same, if that makes sense. So we all come from through buds and we all, you know, got our asses handed to us. But the way, you know, we go about our work is, is a bit different. You know, it's not wrong or, or right. It's not so different where we can't work together. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a bit different. The the East Coast guys, because the the uh it's Virginia, you know, they're more uh, in tune to socializing together outside of the team. So yeah. if you're in the East Coast team, it's nothing to you know, you you know a guy's mom. You know, you met his wife, and your your kids go to the same school. You're at the kids' birthday party. You're you're in there. It, it comes to where you know your world is the teens because it's not much else to do in Virginia. But you know, in the West Coast because it's Cali, uh, those guys got a lot other things, a lot, lot more other things going on because it's, it's California. So we tease each other about, you know, Cali and Virginia and the way we go about business. And I, I would say, you know, that, uh, that right there is the differentiation of what people take, take it and run with it. So in, on the East coast, you, because when you get off work, it's kind of like common knowledge. Like, Hey man, you know, my kid's having a, a birthday party. Come over. Cool. Mm -hmm. In the West coast, they may be like, Hey man, I'm shooting up to LA this weekend. Yeah. I'm going down here. The Phoenix. I'm, I'm going. To, I'm going to shoot the Vegas road for a weekend. You, you have the opportunity because it's a, your location. Yeah, <laughs> we don't really have that. So it's it's you're at everybody's house. All right. Yeah. You you become almost like I said, real family because that's what you're doing. Weddings yeah. and, and birthdays and and play dates. You're 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 doing these things. You know. Yeah. So that's that's where the differences come in, and then it's more of a blue collar you know hard nose when i came in it was it was very much still old school where you know new guys showed up shut your mouth go give me some lunch mop this yeah. floor nice. you're walking around <laughs> you're walking around with the notepad when i came in you know my first day uh me and my my buddy showed up new guys and our and our whites 
And, uh, you know, you know, the food truck outside of the team, we showed up on a Friday thinking we were going to skate all the old guys and try to just check in. Everybody was at the food truck ordering, man. They, they, they threw food at us, you know, we walked in. <laughs> We walked in. It's like five of us. We walk in. You know, the CEO was there. He's like, "You guys look like shit." I'm like, "Oh my god, what a first day!" He he was on us. Uh, you know, we in our white, so it's all mustard and ketchup. They took our tridents off. They painted them blue for inert. They put them in a the bird cage. Like you know, it's, it's ugly. So people don't understand that. Like when you're a new guy, you're very much you're you're a gopher. You know nothing. Okay. You say nothing. You're getting coffee. What's your order, sir? Hey Jay, can I help you? You want something from tropical smoothie? That's what you're doing. It's not like That's you come amazing. in as a badass because you haven't done shit. No, All you're exactly. doing in is you can run and swim. But everybody yeah. at the team can do that. You have no combat experience. You haven't been through a, a workup. So guys looking at you like, get the fuck out of here. Go mop this floor. Go, go get me a couple porn mags. And, you know, you're, you're, you're doing that. We had guys assigned to snacks, you know, keeping the monsters <laughs> cold. And, and, hey, man, getting, getting the dip ready, getting the stuff ready. That's what you're doing. I had never drank coffee before, Buds. Uh, and I had to make coffee. I know how to make coffee. You know, <laughs> make me a cup of coffee, you know. But inside a team, you're you're not. You can't yeah. even tell. As soon as you say your name, people say you shut up. So you're yeah. you're referred to as meat. That's yeah. that's what they call you. Hey, meat, get over here. No one calls that's you amazing. by your name. No yeah. one says petty officer, nah, meat, get over here, and tell me a joke. You gotta have a joke ready to go. You don't have yeah. a joke ready to go, well, you might find yourself jumping off the pier. You know, coming back with a, with a new joke. Nice. So that's, and the reason for that is because you come out of bus thinking you're fucking born again hard. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's hard to teach somebody anything where they think they're the shit. So yeah. it humbles you when you arrive yeah. and all these, all these guys are combat veterans. All these guys mm-hmm. are the real grizzled veterans. You coming in yeah. brand new, fresh faced, young and you realize I don't know a damn thing. You know, you go through CQC, those guys are moving like grease lightning. Yeah. You're over here wide eyed. You don't want to take a shot. We're shooting live ammo. Yeah. You're just, it's moving so fast. You don't want to shoot. You haven't, I've been through CQC runs as a new guy and not taking one shot. Just, just wave my weapon around and just running it. Cause I don't, these guys have done it so, so much. They're moving like a well oiled machine. So as a new guy, it's definitely like drinking out of a, a fire hose, man. And yeah. guys don't understand that. Guys think you can just come out of buds and all of a sudden, voila. You're, you're getting all, all the cool gear and training. Yeah. Negative. You know, what you're, yeah. what you're getting is you're getting Chick-fil-A, you're getting tropical smoothies, <laughs> you're getting you get, you get lunch orders, dude. You're not <laughs> – that's what you're getting. <laughs> get out of here. That's amazing. You're the, you're the DD. <laughs> because you're the, in the uh, – Yeah. You're, you're, in you're the, the uh, um, regiment, it, it's similar because we, mm. we we just call them FNGs, you know, FNU guys. You know what I mean? And yeah. It's, yeah. it's the same concept. They have a trial period. To where they gotta earn that spot on the team, they gotta earn their gear, um, and they gotta earn the right to be, you know, part of the team. So we have something pretty similar. Um, so that's amazing that to hear that everybody has a similar process, right? So that's that's actually yeah. pretty cool. Now, when you come out of uh, uh, um, uh, um, SQ, is it SQT, the yes. uh, uh, pipeline? Do you get to choose? which one you go to east coast or on west coast or is it dictated to you well actually <clears throat> for me now this could have changed since then man so for me when i came when you get the buds around second third phase you get a dream sheet by mm-hmm. that point you, you're you're more than likely going to graduate unless you do something stupid out in town or you just show up one day do some dumb you know you're pretty much going to graduate barring some extraordinary event so you do a dream sheet of where you would like to go now that dream sheet could be an honored or they could tell you to kick rocks yeah it doesn't matter so you kind of put on there what you know the three teams you like to go to and then by the time you get to sqt which is right after buds uh jump school i for, when i went through i had to go to jump school with the army so I had yeah, to go down and the bin, and oh my god, <laughs> and that's, another, that's another story. But anyway, so yeah, so once you get through all that, you get the SQT, then your dream sheet, you'll see if it's honored or not. They'll they'll let you know who's going where. For my class, uh, you know, half went to one team and half went to another team. It was kind of split down the middle. A couple went to SDV, but it's pretty much half to one team and half to another. 
And mm -hmm. uh, then you get, you know, for me, we got our trident in the closed ceremony. I know that's, I think that's changed now, but it used to be a closed ceremony, seals only, or if you're a legacy seal, you, you can be there. Otherwise, you can get out of here. Then after yeah. SQT, during that, you go to Alaska and what have you. So that, that's kind of how it works out. You get the okay. gym sheet, th 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 second, third phase. Maybe it's honored. You find out SQT right before you graduate. You get the orders and you see what's up. And, gotcha. and when I went through, they would pick, you used to get guys picked to go to 18 Delta, whether they want to go or not. It was, <laughs> it was like, raise your hand. If no one raised their hand, they would just pick guys. Yeah, you, you're going to 18 Delta. Yeah, you, you, you're going over there. Which yeah. kind of sucks because Buzz is pretty long. Buzz SQT is about 18 months, you know, uh, they're, they're about you know, 12, 18 months. And then you got to go to the long course, 18 Delta. I mean, mm -hmm. you'd be in student status almost three years before you get to a team. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of guys didn't want to go because they were just tired of just being under the grind. You know, when you're a student, man, you're, that's, yeah. a, that's a grind. Yeah. And I don't know how it is for SF, but for us, when you're a student, because everything's in-house, it's 18 months straight. I don't know, mm -hmm. I was talking to some SF guys when I went to uh, SF uh, uh, skydiving school in Yuma. Yeah, and uh, before we got our, our school, and a couple of guys there was like, "Yeah, you know, when you're waiting on a dive billet, you go to a team, you wait on it, and if one opens up, then you go." Then you go, yeah. But for us, it's in house, so it's back yeah. to back. There's no breaks. There's no going to no team. Nah, yeah. man, you're, you're over here, so it can really wear you down. Yeah. Before you know it, you've been 18 months as a student, just getting under somebody's boot heel, getting grinded yeah. every day, man. You know, so that's how it really goes, and. <clears throat> Once you find out the team you go to, then it begins. Nice, nice. All right, so uh, we have another one here for you. So this one's interesting because I get asked this all the time. So what is it like being a black seal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how can I put this? Oh, man. <laughs> it's like being a damn leprechaun. It's not supposed to exist. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's that's how it is. You 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 get double takes. You know, yeah. I re I remember one instance where uh you know when you're in the seal community, you get a lot of vendors companies want you to wear their gear. I guess so they can say Navy Seal war blah 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 whatever. So you get a lot of people doing that. So I remember one instance we were getting fitted for some shoes, in uh, I think it was REI, and they kind of you know shut down a place and we're going there picking out some uh, some new gear. Uh, some new boots and i'm sitting on there and, like nobody's helping me right and i'm like, like yeah and the guy was like hey uh you need some help i was like yeah i want you know the boots right there that you know those guys got he was like oh no 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 those guys are different those guys are and i said yeah yeah I'm, i want that he's like no no, no. those guys are still you understand i mean we can help you with something now i came in with these guys i walked in right right with them. and i'm like mm, yeah and and my buddy sat down and said man you know is there is there an issue I said, yeah man he's got help me he said he said well you with them you're you're still like yeah his eyes look like he saw a ghost, like he saw an aberration. Like he wanted to touch and see if I was real. It's it's kind of <laughs> like that, but you yeah. gotta expect that. You know, I I would assume it's the same for uh, Eminem being in a predominantly yeah. black you know community, yeah, genre yeah. or or uh, 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 Tyler Hero of the Heat, predominantly black you know basketball player, but he's, he's a white guy. You're gonna get those looks because people are not expecting it. And I always yeah. tell someone. You know, that's not the guy you want to challenge. You don't want to challenge the one white guy who, who's a rapper. I mean, the fact that he's there means he's probably really good at what he does, as you can see with the Eminem or what have you. But uh, yeah, it's, it's like that. It's, it's a little different, but you know, it goes with the territory. I don't, I don't yeah. mind that. I find, I find it hilarious, you know, but yeah. uh, because <laughs> the, the double takes, man, you know, it was, it's, it's, it's wild. Yeah. You know, it's a good, it's a good story about uh, Goggins. So, uh, I, I just, I think I was just past Hell Week and we were doing a beach run and mm -hmm. Goggins, he was already in the, in the teams and he runs by and he sees me. Remember, he's already in the teams. I'm still in butts. He sees yeah. me. He's like, he's, he's, he screams out to the butts and goes, hey, is that the only fucking black guy? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, and you know, when you're, when you're a student, you don't want any spotlight on. You don't want any. And he says that. I'm like, bro, are you killing Thanks, me? bro. <laughs> Yeah, and he just runs by, and the instructors look at me. He's like, "Oh, we'll fucking get wet and sandy." I'm like, "I didn't even do anything." Oh, you just fucking shit on me, dude. He just ran right by. I'm like, "Wow!" So I had to go get wet and sandy, bro. Are you kidding me? 
He's like, yeah, you know, he just ran off like it was nothing. Didn't bother him at all. He kept going. I was like, mm. what, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? You know? That's amazing. All right. So we'll, we'll do one more and then we'll, uh, we'll get you out of here, man. So um, what do audience members want to know? If you had to do it all over again, uh, knowing what you know now, would you go the same path? Would you go to the same special operation unit? Would you do uh, a different branch or would you do everything identical? Everything identical. Everything identical. I, I can't stress enough when you go, and I was in I was in the regular Navy before I went to SEALs. So I had already done a deployment uh, on, a, on a, uh, a carrier. But going through BUDS, it changed my life. You know, it, it sounds cliche to say that, but when, when the pain's on and, and the cold's on, you see what's inside. You, you're going to see what's what. And it's the only community I know of that's that closed off and is that, lack of a better word, brutal. You're going to find out about yourself. So yeah. it, it changed everything. It, it, it let me know how powerful the human mind is when it comes to, you know, trials and tribulations, you know, fatigue, immense pain, uh, and the bonds you make in buds are extraordinary. So, no, I want I won't change a thing. You know, I, I'll keep it the same, same route, you know. And coming from the fleet, trying to go to buds was a uh, was was very difficult because you have to jump through a lot of hoops. You got to kiss a lot of butt. You got to maintain your job at a high level, and also at the same time, you're screaming for this elite team to try to be a part of, just to even get a spot. So it's 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 difficult, but I wouldn't change. Gotcha. Um, before we close off, like I always ask whoever's on the show, this like if you had any piece of advice for the 19 year old you, the 20 year old you that's currently out there trying to figure it out, um, whether it's military, you know, mindset, uh, what would that piece of advice be? Forget the military mindset. Let me tell you, if you're 19, 20, spend your 20s building yourself. What I mean by that is mentally and physically improving upon where you are. Hit the gym, read a lot, talk to the, your elders, guys like Jay, or whoever's in your community. Tap that wisdom and experience that they have. A lot of young people don't do that. Trust me, I did it. It makes a difference. I'm not saying to go outside and have fun and, and you know, party. That's great too. But use this time in your 20s to build your body and mind. And don't be afraid to take critique. The older guys come in here and say, hey, man, you're, you're doing this a little sloppy. Or, you, hey, you're kind of weak over here. Don't jump up and like, oh, man, you're trying to, you're toxic. I hear that term. That should be retired. Listen, life isn't always good. You, what you want to know who you are is about going through the bad times. Now in your teens and your 20s is how you build your resolve. This is where you build it. So by the time you get to your 30s, you have a bit of knowledge. By the time you're in your 40s, you should be pretty locked on. But you build that now. Don't use your body as an amusement park and you're 40 something years old and you wonder why your knee don't work. Well, <laughs> you know, take use that time. Use your youth, man. Build your mind, build your body. Like I said, read a lot, hit the gym. Don't skip it. That's Things amazing. like that, you know. Talk yeah. to your elders. I still remember it till this day. Um and I actually did a video on it on this channel, a piece of information that I got from you uh, uh, when I first met you in Jordan. And you told me about how, you know, you write emails to your son, you know what I mean? And as soon as I got that from you, or as soon as I, I he, like I heard you say it, I started doing that, you know what I mean? Until yeah. this day, you know, like every piece of information that I have, whether it's pictures or email, like I, I send it to my kids, you know what I mean? So yeah. they can reference yeah. it whenever they get older. And yeah. I you know, told my audience like, Hey, like if you guys aren't doing this and you're in the military, like life is too short, whatever you want your kids to know, whether, you know, they're older or younger, like start doing this right away. Yes. And even if you're not in the mill, do that. Your father, because so often fathers are forgotten about, right? And look at where we are now, okay? We need that side. 
And now when you're writing it to your son, it's your own words, how you see it. It's not second, third hand knowledge come from somebody. It's not being filtered through his mom or, or his aunt. It's your perspective. Hey, so if he reads that and he's 2021, 20, you've also explained, hey, this is what I this is where I was at 2021. 20, so he doesn't feel like he's alone in this. And a lot of young men today feel alone because we don't have that community. There's no space for men or males to speak openly. Yeah. Right. And so your son is going to need that as he transitions because you think it's going to get better. It's not. And when he reads his dad's words, he's like, you know what, damn, I, he went through it too. Now you have a blueprint on how to navigate that trial and tribulation that you're going through, that stressful time, because your dad's putting it on paper. Hey, I was down here. I went to screen. I failed, whatever. I tried again. Da, 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 da. Like, oh, it's okay to fail. You learn more from that. Instead of yeah. everybody just putting forth their best, come on, that's, that's not really yeah. accurate. I mean, come on, man. You don't learn anything <laughs> like that. And everybody's, everybody's great. Everybody gets a trophy. Negative. They don't. Nobody yeah. knows who, who won a Super Bowl, who came in second place. Who cares? Sorry. Yeah. Don't want, don't, I don't make the rules, all right? But when mm-hmm. your son's reading that, he understands, put out, right? Yeah. As we used to say, put out, do my best, grind. If you do your best and you fail, you can, I can That's live okay. with that. Yeah, I can live I can with that. Live with that. Yeah. You put out. You put out. But if you come in here half-assing it, and not only did you not you know, do your best, then you want to blame everybody else? Well, if you want to blame race, well, I didn't make up the buds because I'm black. Bro, come on, man. <laughs> hey, hey, here's the runtime, okay? It's the time. Yeah. It doesn't say, here's the black runtime, here's the white runtime. No, no, no. This is the runtime. Here's the yeah. swim time. Here's the same gear he has. Yeah. Now, get it. What's the excuse? So, what's your excuse? So you prepare for that before you even get to the training. You have to understand what you're coming up against. Don't walk in here thinking, yeah, it's no affirmative action over here, brother. Yeah. All right. We're going we gonna to put in the work because what I don't want is do you want somebody to look at you and you're in a team, but they want to put an asterisk by your name? Like, well, you know, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do the swim the same time as I played. But yeah. as you see this in some, I mean, some communities, SF Ranger, you want to put people through for political reasons. I'm going to tell you right now, when they get to the team, they're not going to be accepted. Yeah. So, you know, write those emails. Don't be afraid to talk about your failures as well. Hell, mm-hmm. I will talk about those even more so. Yeah. You learn more from that. As I long as you're not repeating the same failures, you learn more from that. Even, you know, now when I dive and I jump, I still write down my dive. The water was this temperature. Yeah. I wore this gear. Blah, 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 blah. That's knowledge. No different yeah. than a diaper. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, no different than a sniper putting dope on his weapon, right? Yeah. For certain shots. He's writing it down. Okay, this, this distance, I got to hold here. I got to do this. I got to do that. This is the caliber of bullet that I had. This is the ballistics. Bad information. But we don't, we, we don't do that. Men today, young men don't have a space to talk to older guys such as yourself. Hey, man, yeah. what am I doing wrong? How am I effed up here? How come my workout's yeah. not working? How come, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and that's something that I'm trying to change, right? Because along with the content that I put out, I've also put together a Discord thanks to the help of the audience. It's like a big-ass chat room. Oh, okay. where guys can go in there and they'll have direct access to me and everyone else that's in there. Right now, I think mm. we're at about 80%. Uh, okay. Well, 80 dudes are in there just asking questions, you know, um, getting feedback and advice. And of course, if I don't have it, I'll reach out to my connections and get them an answer. So I'm I'm slowly trying to, um, and I wish, you know, more people did this because the more um, I, you know, study the social media space, I find that there's a lot of um, selfless servants out there, right? People that are in it for themselves as opposed to helping um, others. So I'm trying to um, do it a tad bit different. And at any given time, like I have, you know, a bunch of questions coming in, which um, now that I know you're at home hanging out, I'm gonna be reaching out to you a lot more to, to, to get some of your wisdom. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, I'm here. Um, need one it, last man. question. One last question. Uh, and this dude's uh, he's been with me since day one, so I feel like I gotta ask you his questions. <laughs> he's like, he he wants to know why Navy SEALs are always wearing white t-shirts. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. Is is, is that a thing? Uh. 
It must be. <laughs> Because it because it is simple, you know. Uh, for the most part, you know, in Superman, you know, we don't really like labels and stuff. We like it simple, like we say, you know, yeah. keep it simple, keep it simple, stupid. You know that yeah. from the field, you yeah. know. Throwing throwing some white white tees, some jeans, we out the door. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to get all GQ or whatever. It's time and place <laughs> for that, but you know what is it? It's Tuesday. It's a white yeah. it's white tee and jeans. Walk out the door, man. We're not, you know, because you know people get wrapped up. And your appearance matters, your image matters. So I'm not gonna say anything say that it doesn't. But what matters more, if you have a great image, okay, cool. Okay, what can you do? How do you perform? If you can so wrapped up on your image and looking good and your performance sucks, no, no one's gonna care what you're wearing. Right? Yeah. So uh, I wear white tees because it's simple and it's easy, you know, and I'm not I'm not with the graphic tees and the labels and What's those shirts we used to see downrange on people who never been outside the wire? You know, the the, the, the skull, kill, kill them all. That oh, the, uh, Bro, stop, stop. I know what man. you're talking you got, about. Everybody wearing that. It's like, where have you been? And it's the cook. It's the guy. Yeah. It's the mechanic. It's the mechanic. You got the shirt on. Uh, kill them all. What are you, yeah. you killing? WD-40? <laughs> man, get out of here, man. Sit down. Yeah. But, yeah. So. Well, I'll tell you what, man. Um. I appreciate you sitting down with me and I hope this isn't the last time that you and I could do this because I'll be the first to admit, you know, like as far as knowledge goes, I'm not as um, read on as far as SEAL teams and how you guys operate and how you guys do business, right? Because I was focused on my little um, tunnel, right? So every chance that I get to, you know, sit down and speak with you, I'll I'll take, you know, and I'm sure, you know, based on yeah. some of the comments that I'm seeing here um, from the channel, uh, the viewers would appreciate it the same. Um, no problem, man. I can, because again, between you and Remy, and I know Remy's bu uh, busy doing bigger things, but whatever um, access I can get to you to sit down and address some of these issues that some of these guys want to hear. Um, yeah. I'll take it, man. So um, yeah. I'll be reaching back out and seeing. Uh, if you're interested and if you're available, uh, because again, like the experience that you have from your side and the experience that I have from my side, all that's valuable. And I always preach to my guys like we because we call ourselves quiet professionals. And I'm like, all we're doing is, you know, like we are doing this generation a disservice because they are on social media and this is where they're getting the information. Right. So as we retire, that 20 years of experience that we have or that I have you know, in the years that you have, like, we're going to become this cocoon that just hides away and the information just, you know, withers away with us as opposed to, hey, um, here's the information. As long as we're not, yeah. you know, uh, violating anything, like, here's the wisdom, here's the knowledge, here's the lessons yeah. learned over the past years so you don't make the same mistakes, you know, and that's you know, all this is about. You have to adapt or die, you know, in the, yeah. in the 80s and 80s and 90s. Guys weren't walking around from the soft community saying this and that. Either you got her from a movie or a TV show, whether well, it's the A-Team, yeah. one of my favorite TV shows or whatever, that's how yeah. you got your information as a young kid, right? Yeah. So now in this time, these young guys have actual access real time to someone who's mm -hmm. actually done it. What we didn't have, Yeah. right? We didn't have the opportunity. So I hope these young guys understand the opportunity they have before them and maximize it. Call in, yeah. ask the questions. It doesn't matter if you think it's silly or I don't want, I'm embarrassed. Shoot, trust me. If you ask it, probably somebody else is thinking it. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? absolutely. And we didn't have that. We had to get information about no. the soft community through what, a book, uh, remember the, lock, the library, maybe yeah. saw a movie. You don't know what's real, what isn't. You know, I, I was looking at Rambo thinking, oh, that's how SF guys are. Oh, man. You got shoot bow and arrows, shoot bow and arrows, flames and, flames and stuff. You got that, that buoy knife. Is that issued? I don't know. You get that from supply? I don't know. You know, but you got to understand that. That's what yeah. we know until we know different. Right? Yeah. Charlie Sheen, Na Navy SEALs. You know, I'm looking at that. I'm like, yo, yeah. you know, oh. You know, nothing on Starlight, switching the thermal. I'm like, okay, that's how they talk. Then I get to the team, there's nothing, it's, it's nothing like that, right? It's nothing like that. It's like, what? This is not what I was told. Yeah. I, didn't have this, I didn't have this access. I couldn't yeah. type in and call in to a YouTube guy who's actually been there. Hey, is it like this? No, man, it's like this. You're going to be making breakfast as a new guy. Yeah. Oh, shit. 
<laughs> now imagine if you have that knowledge, you know, when I get to the team, I'm gonna be treated as this. It's not as much as of a shock. No, you don't take, not you don't, go you're not gonna take offense to it. You're gonna be co prepared. Exactly. You're not yeah. gonna be offended by it. It was a shock to me. I show yeah. it up. I mean, my, my, my buddy is all new guys. Like, yeah, go get some lunch for us. Yeah. Take some waters. And you, you're, you're a waiter at that point. I mean, yeah. what do you, I, I was DoorDash before DoorDash. <laughs> you know, I mean, pretty much, you know, no one told me this, right? No one told yeah. me that. But uh, I understood why it was that way. And these yeah. young guys have this access. Maximize it, man. Maximize it. I know the world is telling you your masculinity is toxic and, and you're this and you're that. It's like public enemy, man. Don't believe the hype. Stay, stay grinding. That's Stay focused. Surround yourself by people who have the same goals you have of being better. It's easy, you know, I'm a gamer. I like the game. But it's easy to jump on a game and just block out life. But life happens. It's going to happen to you or you're going to mm -hmm. be part of it. So don't, don't believe what the world That's is amazing. telling you that, that by being a male, you're sometimes, you're just born toxic. Come on. Don't listen. Don't. Don't. Because you can believe that. Lies told enough becomes truth. If nobody opposes it, if nobody challenges, nobody say, you know what? I got to push back on that. Yeah. Now you have to stand on your lie. Now let me see the evidence. Now, but if you say nothing, that lie becomes the truth now. All right? If you keep believing, you keep being told that masculinity is toxic and no one's pushing back in your circle, these young guys. You'll believe that you're toxic. You believe that, oh, I need to, I need to be softer. Listen, mm -hmm. man, you know, you know uh, uh, tough times create strong men. Strong men create good times. And good yeah. times create weak men. Mm -hmm. Don't be so convenient. You know, get, get out here and run. I know it sucks. Men working out sucks. I'm 42 years old. Working out still sucks. It, it's not yeah, going to change. Yeah. You're no. just better at you're just better at it because you've been doing it for long, but it still sucks. No one likes to run yeah. and swim. And yeah. But uh understand that as a man, you've seen it in Ukraine right now when the barbarians at the door, all that feminism bullshit goes out the window. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they're looking at the dude to fight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All it always reverts back to nature, that, right? Oh, is, you can't be nature, brother. You can't yeah. you you, you so be prepared. If you think that we can't get people to come over here and try to take our stuff, you're, you're wrong. Look at China. Oh, yeah. You're wrong. And if we're fighting each other and we're divided, whether it's racial, gender, whatever, we're going to get our damn lunch taken. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing my best over here to, to um, make these young men into savages, into freaking animals, into beasts. Like so I said. As long as I can get one or two, yeah. that's a win. Yeah. Um, hey man, civilized savage is, is, is what yeah. I call myself. Be able to put on a nice suit, go out with the mm -hmm. lady, but also be able to throw hands in, in that suit if need be. Exactly. No yeah, win. Exactly. As, like we should say, exactly. escalation of force. Yeah. Right? Stay in your lane, be mm -hmm. respectful to my lady. Okay, cool. We can be cool. You come over here slapping asses over here. Okay, talk is done. <laughs> oh, There's yeah. no diplomat. We're not, we're not having a conversation, the hearts on mind. No, you got to get balled up. And then, and then we can talk after. Oh, yeah. we, can, we, can, we can talk about that. After you go outpatient, you can give me a call. We can talk about it. Yeah, we can hash it. <laughs> we can hash it out there. We can hash it out there. I like it. I like it. Um, but so what I'm going to do, um, so one of the videos I still have, so I'm going to upload that back to the channel just to give this conversation some context. The other one, I think, because I'm, I'm using my phone, all right, I don't have all these crazy um, cameras. So I have my phone, so that's been deleted to make room for more videos. <laughs> so yeah. I'll upload the last one to, to give this conversation that you and, had, uh, that, that you and I just had some context. Um, yep. And then again, man, I appreciate you coming on. I'll be reaching no out um, to hopefully do something with you on the regular on the channel, because I do think that your knowledge and wisdom can be beneficial to these young dudes out there. Um, Happy to do Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming out, man. And if you need anything, let me know. Uh, feel free to jump in the, well, I'm sure you ain't got time to jump in the comment section and answer some of these other questions that people have. 
uh, for you. I don't want to hold you up, so I'm not going to go through the entire thing. Um, hey, man. But I, I got appreciate time to, you. I got, listen, man. I got time today. Let's trust me. I got time today for the Q&A because I, I, oh. I went through hell trying to get information when I was trying to go through Buzz when I was 19, 20. So. Uh, I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, man. If the guys got some questions, they're like, hey, look, I'll, I'll answer what I can. You know, I'll be going overseas here uh, in a few weeks. So I got you. Ask, I got you. Um, I guess we'll tackle this last one because it's one that yeah. I get asked often. Um, have you ever experienced racism in the SEAL teams? <sighs> yeah, of course. Yeah. SEAL teams, you know, it's 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 a microcosm uh, to a certain extent of the greater country. So you're going to get guys in there. You're going to get guys in there who do not grow up around black folks again, right? They're going to get their information from what media, right? And what's on the media about a lot of black men, a lot of bad stereotypes, right? So, listen, part of your responsibility, whether you like it or not. If you're coming to a, whether you're a white guy being on the basketball uh, NBA team or you're a black dude in the soft team, part of your responsibility is correcting those stereotypes. How do you do that? Through your performance, through your character, through your uh, your work in that team. If you come in there and somebody says something to you that you deem as racist and you lose it, well, you just confirmed every stereotype. Yeah. Now, if you're able to articulate and discuss with those individuals why their stereotypes are incorrect and, and what so and so and so now you're changing minds and you may not change his but other people are watching they're gonna say oh you know i like the way jay carries himself you know he's on he's on time he does good work that's going to be the message that's going to but if you come in here oh man nobody better not say that's not the way to do it brother you know again have the dialogue hey man what's your issue and you know how it is in the soft community you call a guy to the face hey man what's your issue well, I don't like yeah. da, 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 da. Okay, come over here. Let's talk about it. Da, 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 da. Now you make it to a point. He's like, "Well, I want to kick your ass." That's a, it's a time go. for that too. Time for that too. <laughs> go in the back of the team, yeah. you know, and, and you, you hash it out. That's a part of life. You're going to get that as a kid coming to a new school, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get people like, "Oh, they want to try you. They want to see what's what because you're different. You're the new yeah. guy, whatever." But you have to be able to roll with it and articulate where you're coming from listen to his side we don't do that again today right yeah. he's a white guy just just because he's white doesn't mean he he's a colonizer that's ridiculous yeah. you know that's ridiculous that's like saying because well, i'm black i'm a gangbanger because you got some black guys yeah. who are gangbangers you have to understand what his side is so he listen to him hey man i don't like black guys because of blah 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 okay well this is why that's incorrect here you go and before educate. you can do that, how can you educate? You have to first be educated. You have to right. know your history. You can't, you can't try to educate somebody and you're in the dark. So you have to be able to master your emotions and you have to be able to put forth your message in a way that's clear and concise and can be easily absorbed by the other side. And do I your agree. job. I agree 100%. Yeah. And do your job. No one's going to care what you got to say if you suck. Sorry. I know people told you it's okay to suck. It's not okay to suck. All right? Do your job. Be on time. Crush it. And, you know, if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for help. Simple as that. You know, if you're, if you're caught up on I mean, I knew going in to the civil community that it was 95% plus Caucasian. That's fine. It didn't bother me. Yeah. Because I'm not going in there for racial reasons. I'm going in there because yeah. I looked at them as being the top so i wanted to be a part of that now you can walk and say you're the best or you can put your shirt in the ring and let's see what's what that's a different I thing i agree that's a different 100%. that's a different thing we both know a lot of people in the army navy always say i know you've heard of this ah oh, i could have been sf i just didn't get the chance <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah they're everywhere <laughs> oh, oh yeah last i heard it was it was volunteer screen yeah what happened? Well, you know, uh, a bunch of excuses, but you got so much to say. Yeah. Put your hat in the ring, and then you talk You talk your talk. Yeah. You can talk your talk, but don't sit there and say, ah, I, I could have done that. Because you know how it is. You'll get those same guys trying to challenge you. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, that's yeah. part of it. And, you're, and for me, I'm like, okay, 
I beat you, I gain nothing. They're gonna oh, say, yeah. well, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to win. You're yeah. supposed to win. You're you're a seal. But if I lose, you're gonna say, ah, I, I beat a Navy SEAL. <laughs> so I'm like, it's a trap. Out of here. <laughs> it's a trap, you know. Don't don't play the games. Again, yeah. people people think we in the soft community we're just rolling around at our houses putting guns together blindfolded. No. You're very much a thinker. You're very much yeah. a strategist because your community is so small, you might be in there briefing admirals and generals mm-hmm. as an E5. You better know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially when you're in the talk. You know how it goes. Oh, yeah. If you can't articulate this mission set and what you guys are going to do, you're not getting the mission. You sound like exactly. a bumbling idiot. Bye. Exactly. exactly. And you're E5, E6, yeah. whatever. So know what you're talking about so you when you're in the room you got to see at the table you maximize it mm-hmm. and you go out there and you, and you do the good work and come back ar is great you're like okay next next mission right yeah so. that's amazing man that's amazing but hey i appreciate you brother um yeah, man. again i'm gonna be reaching out i appreciate you taking the time and sitting down with no me problem. and discussing the video um like i said i'm gonna throw it back on there so folks have something to reference back to uh, and then I'll be in touch, man. Hopefully you and I can do something on the regular on the channel so that these guys will have access to the knowledge and the wisdom, man. You I got my information, you. man. Reach out anytime. If, if I'm available, I'll do what I can to assist. Too easy, brother. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take it easy. Yep.